you know, you've been mentioned a lot on this show lately. We'll get to that in just a second. But but I want to promote the show, The Orange Show, which is available on YouTube. And also, you also have your own comic book. Talk about that. Is that not crazy? I know Doll. Look at Doll. Look at Doll. Everybody go to Doll. <laughs> I'm jealous. He has known me on a lot of different levels and a lot of different conversations we've had in the past 20 years. But there it is, folks. Believe it or not, I am a comic book superhero. Now, what it's kind of like a career synopsis, life synopsis, but put in uh, comic book form so that it appeals to some folks that it wouldn't normally. And, uh, Kind of proud of that. You know, people ask you if you're around very long, are you going to write a book? I had written one sometime, some time ago, but there's been a big gap in it. So finally got one out and uh, appreciate it. If everybody pick one up at either Amazon or they can go to www.12sport, which is our new gathering ground, I guess it would be. So uh, pick it up there or on Amazon. So thanks. That's that's all the shilling I'll do today. <laughs> and what's the name of the comic book so people can go on Amazon and look for it? Thank you, ma'am. Arn Anderson, my life is the enforcer. Um, and also, Arn, uh, since you know you are one of the, the most notorious veterans here, you know, we did. Like, I I was just doing that when I was walking my dog, and I knew that you were gonna come in. <laughs> <laughs> I was like walking, walking the dog. Like, come at me. Um. <laughs> How do you have what was that? I don't know where that came from. That just popped, <laughs> kind of popped in my head. Isn't that crazy? Who thinks about stuff? So over. I remember when you did that the first time. And I'm like, oh my God, he's a gangster. Like for real. <laughs> like, it was so over. Like, do you know like what 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 made you do it? Like it was well, just like the kid of the I had, I had I had which I think everybody on that panel will tell you this done a promo. You literally do get just bullet points in your head of things you want to say and yeah. then try to try to organize them. You know that. Yes. You, you can't sit down and just memorize a, or I can't a, a two minute promo and, and then go out and recite it. I can't do it, but you can get a couple of bullet points and we're getting ready to go through the curtain. And uh, I looked at Cody and I said, I got most of it. I don't have it all. Do you trust me? And he said, yes, I trust you. Famous last words. <laughs> so I really did not have that part of it. <laughs> so we went out and poor Lee. Oh God, Lee, go back and look at the tape. Lee was like, <laughs> he just seen a ghost, but um, it just popped into my head. Hey, you know, my promos have always been and that what keeps them from being just typical promos and something different, I think, is I give everybody something in real life that they can relate to, you know, yeah. something that doesn't matter if it's your mailman, it's a construction worker, it's a lawyer, doctor, you know, and uh, these are tough times. Every time you cut on the news, somebody's taking somebody's car away from them in the middle of the day right there, the red light or all the wars or all the, all the hurricanes, you name it. It's mm -hmm. life is full of that. And at that time, I just thought, Hey, let's give them something. Let's wake Cody up to what you think he should be. And that's where the, you take my car, I'll spill your brains all over the sidewalk. How's that for afternoon delight? <laughs> Whatever it was. <laughs> and, and you look at Cody when I said that and he went, Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and you can just oh Jesus! <laughs> like, and when I came back through the curtain, Brock was standing there. His jaw was on the ground, and I got to Gorilla, and Tony wasn't there. Tony, oh, Khan. oh. <laughs> okay, I'm fired again. <laughs> How many companies are left? Because I think I just. Got and he came he came back around the corner thank god he said i just just talked to the tnt people I went, oh. Oh, Jesus. Not only that, i'm gonna get arrested you know this is gonna get bad he said if it was anybody else this would be an issue but that is vintage arn anderson and that's the message i got back oh. 
So there's an underlying message there, which I'm sure you know, be true to who you are. Yeah. And everything comes out of your mouth will be real because it is real to you. A lot of, yeah. a lot for a second, people. for a second there, I thought you were going to say that Tony Khan came back in and said, "I just, I just had to use the bathroom. Did I miss anything?" <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say anything. You didn't do anything weird, right? Yeah. I was hoping that might be it. <laughs> Arne, maybe, were you surprised maybe. with like with all this happened, like how popular you became on like with, with all the Gen X and everybody? Like you were a meme for months for months it was your picture doing that and like people will just like come up with like the most outrageous ideas did you did you get any of those pictures sent to you yeah and you know i didn't know what it was you know <laughs> <laughs> i mean i have no idea what a meme was what the hell is what's that little short thing hopping around up in the corner I, don't know. <laughs> no, I just started learning how to use a cell phone. Come on. Uh, Arn, we used to have promo class and I won't get into the details, but you hit on a point where you said, just make something real or something believable to someone that can relate to. And you were called up, I think just out of the blue by Vince to do cut a promo. And I won't even get into the details, but you basically opened your wallet and just talked about the credit cards in there and scared the shit out of each and every one of us that were sitting there as in like, is he coming back to beat us all up at, uh, when Raw starts? <laughs> it was so real and because you're a real, you're so real and we see it all the time. And it was this amazing thing that you did on the fly. And you were just look, you're basically Kaiser Sose looking at things on the wall and cutting a promo for us. And it was beautiful. And I feel like a lot of people don't realize the help that you've given to a bunch of us behind the scenes. You're awesome. You have this body of work that's in the ring and the horsemen and badass DDT and killing it and promos. And But behind the scenes, you helped out us so much. Was there someone in your life that helped you out that way? Like so much, like top to bottom, in the ring, on our work, on our storytelling, on our promos. Was there someone that helped you out that you gave back to us so much? God, there's a lot of guys. Um, when I first went to Bill Watts, I was a month in the business. You know, I'd been to Pensacola for three weeks. And Ted DiBiase, for some reason, about after being there for about a month, who was working on top in Mid-South, started mentoring me and, and talking to me. And he actually asked me, you know, to, to ride with him, you know, to the town. Now, he's a top, top guy. I'm a guy a month in the business one month. And uh, when I got to the meeting point, I found out why he wanted me to ride with him because he wanted me to drive his car while he slept, <laughs> 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 which is a no, no, as we know the right. the co-pilot never sleeps, right? Dog? Yeah, these right. Kids, the, does the kids even know that today? Uh, I don't know, but I, I I'm traumatized. I never go to sleep. Even if I'm dying, I'm just like, no, I need to stay up and you stay up. Well, I, I had a I had a kick Zack Ryder a couple different times and he was driving off the side of the road. But I, I usually drove just, you know, we needed a grown up. But that's fine. Well, that's a better. That's a better <laughs> move. You know, and when you tell guys why you don't go to sleep, because if you do, he's going to he falls asleep, going to hit a guardrail and your head's going to be back here on my lap. Do you understand what I'm saying? And their eyes get big and they say, OK, can we get a coffee? So <laughs> Whatever it may be. But Ted was a mentor. Tim Horner took me out 15 minutes every night. Uh, in those days, you couldn't punch or kick and uh, couldn't fight on the floor. You had to wrestle in chain wrestling. And uh, those guys mentored me. Uh, Jerry Stubbs, at a little bit later date, I learned from. Brad Armstrong, all the guys that just went out and without sitting down talking about a bunch of stuff, just led you through a match. Um, and the group of guys that I got to work with the 19 years, you being one of them, I can honestly say, Dolph, when I saw my name beside your name, because that can be raw and SmackDown can be a very, very, very tough day. If you know, if you got the wrong match with 50 moving parts, you got a full day ahead of yourself. Yeah. You got to make something happen because if it don't fly, guess who they're going to look at? Not the talent. They're going to look at you and go, what happened? Right. Um, and when I saw your name beside it, I said, he, this guy gets it. From day one, I knew you got it and you figured it out early on. And 
to be able to perform at the level you have for the number of years. How many years did you work for those guys? Uh, 19 and a half, I think 19. So. About the same. I'd been out, I'd been there, you know, and I saw your growth and you're so relaxed and you would have fun when you would have a good match, you know, and when you weren't put in the best of situations, I never one time saw you pull somebody off to the side and start burying a bunch of shit. Why are they doing that to me? You just did your job. And as we know, you were swimming uphill on some, some politics that was not of your control, you know, yeah. and we would try our best to protect you from that room because I mean, you were <laughs> one of those guys that, just went out tore it up and you, there was never a day that you, you came back to the curtain. I went, what was that? I mean, and that <laughs> happened with everybody. Right. Uh, so I is enjoyed that. Is that why you spine busted me? Is that why? Oh, is that the one that no matter what it is that shows up in any kind of form is me spine bustering you? Is yes. that the one? Greensboro? Greensboro. Damn right. I've got a highlight reel of one <laughs> and it's, me hooking and dog, they're shooting it in this way, and all you see is his ass and my head peeping around him. The money shots for both. And of he's us. at yeah, the good. peak. Yeah, he's at the peak there. So, uh, <laughs> yes, I use that for everything. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Anderson, um, a couple of weeks ago we had Cody Rhodes on, and Cody Rhodes spoke highly of you on our show. It's got the internet talking about about you now, especially since uh, you're gone from AEW. But looking at Cody Rhodes, him leaving AEW, going back to the WWE, now being the guy, and you can really make the claim, the guy in all of pro wrestling, did you see that coming? Because like you were with him in AEW, but taking that chance on himself, going back, and then now being at the top of the company. Um, I'm going to be perfectly honest here. Um. The morning that, I mean, there was the rhetoric, is he coming? Is he going to sign his contract? Is he going to stay? Is he going to leave and all that? And I, I'd been there long enough that I saw with AEW, he was kind of in, in control of his own destiny. And that doesn't happen very often when you've got the owner who backs you 100% and gives you kind of full reign. Jesus, Dolph, Dolph could tell you how great would that have been? <laughs> you know, WWE had that much input, you know, so I'm thinking he, he's not going to go the morning they left. He decided, made that decision. I get a call and uh, my wife comes in and goes, well, they're, they're talking about, you know, Cody's leaving and all that. And they left and today and I went, oh, bullshit, he ain't going anywhere. And I rolled back over and went to sleep. Um, this was early morning and uh I thought about it, and when he left, he kind of took what I was doing and what Brock was doing at the time and some other people who took the angle with him when he left because we were his guys. Um, so I thought, well, shit, I guess he did leave. And uh, I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I, I know, knowing him, that he did what was best for his family at the time and people, I mean, I must've had 50 phone calls. What do you think about Cody leaving? What do you think about in this business guys come and go talent switches companies. That's always been the case. Um, and the reality is if you do it for the good of your family, because they are our all stars, they, they hold the whole thing together that people never see. If you do it for the good of them, it can't be a wrong decision. And obviously it was the right decision. And uh, he's tearing it up. He's kicking ass. And why wouldn't you want a guy like that? He looks the part. He is a professional. He has the lineage. He has the right attitude. He has everything positive that you would want in your lead guy as your champion. And uh, we're all happy for him. Would, would you ever think about aligning yourself back with Cody? especially since he said all those nice things about you uh, recently. I wonder what that was about. What was he setting me up for on that deal? <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying, like, do you, have you heard? I know there's a lot of speculation online, but did you actually ha hear what Cody said? I did. I did. And I was very, very humbled and appreciative. And 
He's right. You know, it's like when I left WWE, I was prepared to be retired, maybe do a little couple of comic cons here and there. I, I'm, I'd had enough, you know, I, Jesus Christ, 42 years in the business wow. is enough, you know, and guys, I was never without a job. And I'm saying that positive and negative. I worked straight through 42 years. There was never a gap of a year or here or there, six months where I was out of work. So I was ready to be retired. And when he called me, he said, man, we got this new company and this is going to be something cool. Won't you, won't you come up here and let's, you know, let's talk and come to our pay-per-view and, you know, let, let's talk about this. And it was the last time that I had real fun in the business. He allowed me to have some fun on my way out, which I thought that I was way past that. So I was very appreciative of that. So let's get the team back together. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, maybe, you know, let's get the team back together. Because and in and, and all honesty, it is a bit of a new or different WWE. So would you ever think about going back with the situation the way it is now? Well, in case you don't know, I am 65 and my liver is 127. <laughs> Oh, I okay. am, I am on short time and I don't have a lot of time probably on the planet, much less in the business, but I have, uh, dedicating whatever time I have left in one way or the other to helping my son, Brock, who is, bro is breaking in, um, get a, get a spot in the business with some company and, uh, get established and, and help him get to a position where he can make a living and contribute and be a valuable asset to whatever company that uses him. That's what I want to dedicate whatever time I have left for. Um, and if that means what we're doing now, we're running around driving to some uh, Indies and people that are using us, AML, thank you. Uh, just whatever shots are within driving range that are plausible, don't involve, you know, I don't, I don't want to get on a plane these days and unless I just have to, to be honest with you. So if I can drive it and he can drive it, let's do it. And we'll just go around and, uh, and uh, exercise our name uh, to help these young uh, independent promotions, maybe draw a few more people, but, would I, would I come back in the right situation for a short-term something with Cody? If anybody out there thinks it's a good idea, let me know. I don't know. That would be something, because he and I have never had that conversation. Mm -hmm. And after that thing blew up just a couple of weeks ago or whatever it was, uh, coming off you guys' show, I mean, it, it, it that blew up. And it was like, okay, he's coming back. Okay, da-da-da-da. And I, I sent him a text and his wife has been ill, asked how she was, asked how he was, everything going okay. And we had a couple of texts back and forth and it never came up. So I went, maybe that was just him testing the waters himself when he, when he threw that out there. I don't, I'm not, I'm not sure. I was honored and flattered of the things he said, but it's all true. And that's the way I handled Cody, you know, Hey, your star of the show, go out there and act like one. Arn, in this new phase of your career, and uh, you mentioned now that uh, one of the things that you're focusing on is helping your son to to have a prominent place in any any promotion at this point, and he can do his he can you know continue the name. Uh, what else is for you? Like wh what are what are you looking for? Like what makes you happy? What what fulfills your heart? With before this actually came out, but beforehand. Tony Hunter, uh, who books talent for comic cons and things of that nature and the independent shows and signings and all that stuff. He had started booking me on comic cons and they are long days, but I know yes. I've, I've seen you at, at some of them when, when it's your option and it's really your, one of your only options, it becomes a lot easier to just, catch up with all the fans that you never had a chance to face to face, you know, me having a job and working seven days a week, all those years, all those decades, I never got to sit down or even like you and I are right now and just say, Hey guys, thank you for giving me a career. 
If it wasn't for wrestling fans, I would not have a career. My family owes everything we have to the wrestling industry. Everything. And I, I'm grateful and I'm thankful. And I just want to shake your hand. Let's take a picture together. That's what interests me these days. And it kind of blends because it's wrestling fans that come to see me. It's not comic book kids that look up and go, 15 years old. Oh God, there's Arnie Anderson. They just probably go, Hey, who's the old guy over there that looks tired of shit? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's he doing? <laughs> now you got the way? comic book though. Now you're all set. You're, you're in got, with the comic yeah, book kids. I, I'm not just an old bastard. I'm an old bastard <laughs> with a comic book. <laughs> that's me on there with the abs, which had to be real. That's a real falsification. But anyway, that's another subject. <laughs> but, but don't tell them, don't tell them that to the kids. But, you know, just like you and I have talked a couple times, Thunder, you mm -hmm. know, my I, I still enjoy a young guy that comes to me and I can tell he's not doing it just to be seen asking me, but he really wants me to critique. Would you watch my match? If you're still going to be here, would you consider watching my match and, and let me know what you could, I can do better? Those guys, those kids, or sometimes it's a veteran, believe it or not. I am more than honored and more than happy to help anybody that wants to help. Because if we don't pass the information on, Dow Dolph, you're in that role. They're not going to get it. They're not going to get the storytelling and how important the selling is and how important to get your character over so that when you say something, people believe it. All those things that are outside of just tonight, I'm going to fall out of the ceiling. And if if that's not big enough next week, I'm going to go on top of the building and I'm going to jump off the top of the building. Oh, we're talking about that. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, there's more to this business and a lot more if you're going to connect and be long term with the fans that then understand you. And if you get over, it's because of the storytelling. And most importantly, most importantly, selling. I can't stress that enough. Don't do spectacular A, B, C, and D, and then expect me if you don't sell any of those things, A, B, C, or before you get to D, if you haven't sold any of that, I can't remember what A was. Yep. Much less where it fits and what story you're trying to tell. And I know that's dated psychology, and and uh, but I think it's it's something that needs to correct itself, and that has to come from the talent. I, that's a great point. Art. One, it's not dated. Like we, I'm guilty of it. We're all guilty of it, but we all try and preach it to each other. But also there, you know, there was someone like you, your generation, there was so many calling it on the fly, working with each other and then passing that down to us. And somewhat of our generation in New York, where it was like three minute matches and two, three and two minute segments. And you, and I have to go to the street props and go, guys, you're not going to learn anything in this match, but we're going to get this move and this move. And we got to cut to break. Okay. Got it. Okay, great. So then when you, and then because of COVID, you miss out on some live events and you're not getting those reps in, what can we do? Or what are you seeing other than this lack of selling that can help everybody out that our generation can still pass on? You said that it might be dated, like no selling and psychology one-on-one that'll always be there. Mm -hmm. And we fit the moves around it. What are, uh, if when you go to those independents and someone asks you to watch their match, what are you noticing the most that we, we all overlook? Well, I know this is insane to even suggest, but I guess if you can do it for the WWE with the quality stars that, that I was responsible for, and you could certainly do it today. I used to walk around, I would look, and I would look at the schedule of matches and I would, I knew what guys did, you know, you need to know what everybody else does and does well and does shitty <laughs> to be honest with you. So you can avoid that. And when they suggest I like to do this, you go, well, if you don't mind, let's put something else out there. I can't make that look good for you. When I mean you suck at that, <laughs> so I'm going to protect you from yes. yourself. Right. Um, I would go around the locker room if I was a talent today and I would look at what the matches were, what the guy, and I would ask guys, here's what I've got planned for the finish of my match or a big heat spot. Will this conflict with anything you guys are doing? And I would go to every match and ask them the same thing. Here's what we're doing. Because if you're the third person to do a super kick, 
and just stand a guy up instead of knocking him on his ass. And if you're the third one of the night, pretty good chance people are already desensitized to it. So yeah. you just wasted that move. And if I would have, you know, if they would have known, maybe they would have pulled it and did something else. I would suggest that repetitious spots, it doesn't matter how spectacular they are, seen it, saw that two matches go. And it's a lot of times it's a three or four move leading to a big, big bump, but it's, it's the second or third time I've seen it tonight in that exact form. You know, so I would just, I would suggest people to take time, talent to take time. And it's not a pain in the ass. It's a respectful thing. You go to a guy and I know you do this. Or are you putting this in a feature role? If I do this, which is kind of like that, will that affect you? That would be my suggestion, you know, for the young guys, especially. Have a notepad with you and jot it down in case you forget. Bobby, caring uh, about the overall condition and caring about the overall flow of the show. I think building a show is like building a match, least to most. And then you put a couple of little beautiful spots that give you hope if that's what you're shooting for. Uh, just, just go back to some old school theories and, and things that work. Tell a story, I mean, even if it's three minutes, Dolph, you told a story of some nature in that three minutes. You just didn't throw your hands up and go, oh, shit, just knock me down three or four times, we'll go home. Right. You know, you thought about it. Yep. What can I get in in three minutes that makes sense? What do we do last week? Where are we heading next week? Maybe this is all we need. Right. Mr. Anderson, and and, cause, and thank you so much for for the time it truly is a pleasure having you on and it's been amazing talking to you for 30 minutes and it's gone by like that and i want to mention of course the orange show that's available right now on youtube and also available on amazon.com so there's no excuse for everybody who's listening go to amazon.com right now i'll wait right. amazon.com <laughs> and get uh arn anderson my life as the enforcer available right now uh there's actually a 10 percent sale on amazon for the book so make sure you go to amazon.com right now and you order it but uh i i gotta ask you this question because it's been on my mind and there's been a recent documentary about it so i just want to get your take and you started your career in georgia championship wrestling i was a big fan of georgia championship wrestling as as a matter of fact my first exposure to pro wrestling was georgia championship wrestling uh, Black Saturday is obviously an event that people still talk about today, and here we are so many decades later. When Vince McMahon took over that time slot of Georgia Championship Wrestling on July 14th, 1984, and I put it on to look at Gordon Soley, and there's Vince McMahon's face, I still feel it in my stomach even to this day. But did you know in that moment that the landscape of pro wrestling was about to change? Uh, I was working for the Fullers and Continental Wrestling at that time. And uh, it was strictly NWA, NWA style. You had Armstrongs, you had Fullers, you had Jimmy Golden, myself, Jerry Stubbs. You had a, a crew of guys that were true to that NWA style. And just seeing that show, the only way I could explain it is if Scott Armstrong, who I – became really, really good friends with the, he called and, uh, what well, called home for some reason is dad said, y'all might want to watch the show today. I've been getting some phone calls, something, something's going on. And so we started watching it. And when it was over, Dave, the only thing I could, I looked at him, I said, I feel like I've had a death in the family. Wow. It was that intense for me because in those days, no matter where you worked, what territory, if you went to Atlanta TV and you made that television that aired at 605 and 805, you were recognized back in your territory, whether it was Oregon or Puerto Rico or Texas or, you know, wherever it was, you immediately were a star in the people's mind. And it would make you just being featured on that show. And it was all of a sudden there was a 360 screech to halt. What, what are we what, what are we seeing here? What are we watching? What what's going on? I knew it would not be good because it was so different from what 
we were used to seeing. Wow. I mean, thank you for that honest answer. And Triple H, if you're listening right now, sign Brock Anderson so we can see Arn Anderson and Cody. Back together. <laughs> that's me. That's me talking selfishly. Um, and again, go to. Go to Amazon.com right now. Arn Anderson, my life as the enforcer available right now. And as I said, there's a 10% sale on Amazon.com. And definitely follow the Arn Show. Watch it on YouTube as well, Mr. Anderson. Uh, every, anytime you have anything to promote, please come here on Busted Open. We love having you on. And thank you for giving us so much time this morning. Can I clarify one thing and leave you with one closing image, if you don't mind? Yes. And thank you for having me. I'd love to come back sometime. This this Dolph's butt picture getting spine busted. <laughs> but the story that you don't see is earlier in that match, he knocked me cuckoo. Oh, my God. <laughs> he knocked me out on the outside just prior to that spine buster. <laughs> just so we have full story. See, you know, see, old timers like to purple. take advantage of certain kids and so every once in a <laughs> no, while. No, no, no. no so I bad, took full no. advantage of that young kid, Arn Anderson, and popped him <laughs> right in the face. Just that, welcome to the business, kid. Crack, you know. <laughs> I know I won't ever say to him, bring it, lay it on in there now. <laughs> Those words will never cross my mind if he's in the building, just so everybody knows. <laughs> there is an, also a beautiful picture of me punching you, and I, I am so sorry for hitting you so no, hard. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> i know but i had my lawyer said i had to say i was sorry so oh my god no i'm just kidding uh Arne, you are absolutely irreplaceable and not just in the ring behind the scenes you were such a help to us i'm sure you were doing the same thing in AEW with thunder and everyone well i, I everything that you have helped us with behind the scenes is a full book so i'm gonna order your comic book as soon as we get out of here uh for the day but you're absolutely your <laughs> brain is irreplaceable and uh, thank you so much for everything, and as I uh, and giving us some insight to what you're missing today and everything else, and hopefully we see you back. Well, or I'll see you at one of these weekends, and I'll you'll see year. me somewhere. And the fact that you're actually telling me you're going to reach in your wallet and spend a couple bucks <laughs> but is bullshit. Well, I have a coupon; it's ten percent <laughs> off. So I don't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Thank, thank, thank you so much, Mr. Anderson.